Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we are going to program a drone to track a face. We will do this using OpenCV and apply a PID controller to have smooth movements. So let's get started. So in the previous videos, we have initialized our teledrone and then we got the frame from it and then we found the different faces within our images and we sent the uh, information or we returned the information of the closest one in this list uh, which we called info and you can see here using that info uh, zero element and then again zero we are getting the cx value which is the center x which will allow us to rotate based on our uh, face which will do all the tracking now this will fluctuate a lot so we will add this value to a pid controller and that will help us smoothen out this uh, what do you call tracking algorithm so what we will do is we will go back to our utilities and within the utilities as you can see we have the initialize drone and then we have tello get frame and then we have find face and now we are going to add the track face so we will write here track face and this will need the my drone object and then it will need the info that we are going to uh, receive from our face and then we are going to write here width and then we have the PID parameters and then we have the error now I will explain what these are uh, as we go along so let's just write that down and the first thing we will do is we will find the error between our actual value and where we should be so our actual value is basically width divided by 2 so that means that for example if we have uh, 640 then our act uh, our mid middle value is basically three, uh, 320 so this means that our position should always be 320 if we are tracking the object properly so this means that whenever it's above uh, what do you call uh, the value is above 320 then we have a positive error and whenever we have it below uh, 320 then we have a negative error so whatever value we are getting so we are getting for example cx we will subtract it from 320 so that 320 will give us the error so this will be our error so we are going to write it in a better way so we will write here error is equals to cx is basically the info at element 0 and then again element 0 so this is cx and then we will write minus width divided by 2 so whatever the width we are changing over here it will automatically affect that so we don't have to write it again and again so this will give us the error now here we are basically doing the PID controller now if you're not familiar with PID controllers I would highly recommend that you go out and check a video there's a lot of videos on YouTube that explain this very well so I will not go into the detail of uh, what it does and how it works but to give you a brief idea PID is basically there to help you out in uh, smoothing your transitions so basically when your drone is moving you want it to move smoothly not uh, just going back and forth the oscillations should not be very aggressive so to reduce those we are going to use PID then we will write the equation of our PID so what we are controlling in PID is the speed so here we are going to write speed and as you know PID is basically you have to multiply your KP multiplied by your error and then you have you will add this to um, what do you call KD which is your differential multiplied by your error minus your previous error so that is KD and then we also have KI but in this case we are not going to use PI so we will remove that these values will be coming from this variable PID so we will write here PID at element 0 and then we will write PID 
at element 1. So if we go back to our face tracking, we will write here PID is equals to, let's say 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0. So this is the KP, the KD, and this is the uh, KI. So, and then we will go back here, and now we have implemented the PID. Now all we have to do is we have to send this value to our, uh, what do you call, drawn. So we are going to first check that if we are actually detecting a face or not. So we will write if info at the element zero, and then again the element zero is not equals to zero. This means that there is an actual coordinate of the face. Then we are going to say my drone dot your underscore velocity is equals to speed right so we are sending this as the speed now the thing is that this uh, function actually might yield a bigger value or a lesser value than what is accepted so we have to constrain it so that it does not exceed the limits so what we can do is we can use the clip method to actually do that so we will write that our speed is equals to uh, what do you call np this is numpy dot clip and we want to clip the speed and we want to clip it between minus 100 and 100 so if it's above 100 it will keep it as 100 if it's below minus 100 it will keep it as minus 100 so it will not let it go further and np is not declared because we have to import import numpy as np so if we go back here and there you go so this will always make sure that the speed is in between and then we can send the speed and if that is not the case else we are going to put all the velocities to zero so where are the velocities we wrote them here. I will copy all of these. Oh, I want to copy. Uh, copy all of these. And we will paste it here. So we will put all of them as zero. And then we will also put the error is equals to zero. And the last thing we have to do is we have to return this value of error. Because this will be the previous error next time we do the calculation. So we will write here return error okay and that should be good so if we go back and here we are going to go to step number three step number three and then here we will write that our previous error is equals to uh, what was the name of the function track face track face and then we are going to write my drone and then we will write info and then we will write the width and then the PID and then the previous error. Now we can declare this previous error here and we can put this as zero. And yeah, that should be enough. And then we will go back to our utilities and here we will do the last step, which is basically to send the value to our drone. Now here we are not actually sending, we are just setting the value. Now we have to send it. So here we are going to write that if my drone dot send underscore RC underscore control, then we are going to send my drone dot send RC control and we will write here my drone uh, my drone dot left right velocity left underscore right underscore velocity uh, then we are going to write forward and backwards and then we will write up and down and then we will write the your velocity So that should be good and oh yeah we have to write my drone dot here my drone dot my drone dot okay so yeah now it's good and that should send the values 
but wait a second okay so yeah let's let's print this out so before we actually run it let's print out the value so we will write here speed and what I will do is I will move the drone around by hand and so that you can see whether it's actually moving actually changing the speed or not so for that we are going to comment all of this out and I will connect the drone and then we will run it So as you can see, the value of the speed changes as we move around, uh, when the face moves around in the image. So now what we can do is we can uh, uncomment this so that the values are sent. And one more thing that we have to do is we have to tell the drone to actually take off. Because so far it's on the ground and it's not really running. The thing that we are sending here is only the yaw velocity and we did not actually tell it to go up. So what we will do is we will go to our face tracking and over here we are going to write uh, over here that the, the initial step is basically to fly. So flight and here we will write if start counter is equals to zero then we are going to write my drone dot takeoff and we will write start counter is equals to one and we are going to write it here start counter is zero now if you want to just test the drone for no flight put this as one and for flight put this as zero so now we have put it as zero and it is going to take off and then it will go and it will start doing all of this so hopefully it will work out well so i will uh, grab the uh, image of the face and i will move it around so we can see how it performs and uh, some of you might ask why am i not using my own face well it's very simple uh, i can print a hundred images but i have only one face so that's why we will be using an image okay so we are getting an error and one thing i forgot to do is that we have to convert it into integer when we are using the clip method here we have to convert this into integer so we will put this as integer and now it should work fine so let's run it again So as you can see, we are able to detect the face properly and we are able to track it based on the center position of it. And you can see the movement is not very jerky. And you can, of course, smoothen it more by going here and changing the values over here. This is just some random values I tried a few times and then these are the ones I found a little bit better. But of course, there's a lot of room for improvement. You can change these and get much better results. Now, uh, you might ask, how can we uh, move the drone forwards and backwards? This is just about rotation. Now, the forwards and backwards is pretty much the same thing. For that, I'm not doing this right now because I'm in indoor environment and it's a little bit dangerous. But if you want to uh, do the forward and backward, it will run as well. So all you have to do is you have to add another PID. So you have to repeat these three lines of code. So you will do a PID on the area as well. So let's say you should have, for example, 10,000 pixels, right? This should be your area. Now, if it goes above that, then you should go backwards. 
if it goes below that then you should go forwards so this is how you can go forwards and backwards based on the area now again you can implement a PID on area as well and then you can send the speeds over here so you can uh, send the speed of forwards and backward velocity over here so uh, right now we are only sending the uh, yaw velocity then you can also send the forward and backward so you can copy this here and you, for the second speed you can write here for example speed forward you can write it here and then sp this speed forward will be coming from here so you can try that uh, you can try that out as well so this is it for today's video i hope you have learned something new if you like the video give it a thumbs up and i will see you in the next one